when I was a little boy, my nan's house would be full of Christmas cards. Like full, full. To the point where there were, I think, structural issues between because the amount of blue tack to plaster has reached tipping points. If there was a sort of moment where there was a volcano that buried the house and they were discovering it years later with paleontologists and people like that, they would be like, what is this blue stuff? There were so many Christmas cards. The whole wall would be filled on one side. The mantelpiece would be especially lined up with them, with the special ones around the clock in the middle. Anybody else do that? Then above the TV, there would be some. And then one day, one day, because we used to worry about this, we found a new place. It was like the discovery of oil. We discovered we could go up the staircase with the cards. And then that became filled. Two whole new layers of cards. It was literally a house of cards. Now, these cards were not like letters. They basically said, to Val and Bob from Derek and Eunice. If you were lucky, and I mean really lucky, sometimes they'd written, Merry Christmas. <laughs> the whole house was festooned with the things. This year, I've had three. Three! So few cards, I'm a little bit embarrassed to put them up. Three cards. Now this might be, and this is true because I don't make as much cake as she does. It might be because I'm not as popular as my nan. I can probably accept that after much therapy. But I am a millennial, so I'm gonna blame it on wider trends than not just me. <laughs> Which is that people don't send as many cards anymore. It's a modern crisis for the card factory and for Postman Pat, who might soon be out of a job. We don't send cards anymore, what do we do now? We send texts, hooray. Now when I was a boy, the longest text you could send was 164 characters because each one cost you credit. We invented whole new words to try and cram meaning into those characters on your Nokia 3310. Oh yes, with Deluxe Snake. There we are, you kids know who you were born. The luxury versions had backlight as well. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. But here is where I start to feel really, really old because my kids now do have phones and they just send not just one message, but like all of the messages ever. When one message comes through, it's pip, and it's pip, and it's pip, 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 the phone sort of nearly explodes. 20 messages sent, and it's basically, can you pick me up? Why? Why can they send so many messages so quickly? Because it doesn't cost them anything. It doesn't cost them anything at all. We had to squeeze everything into those few words. How do you really communicate with someone if you want to say something? How do you really get to know someone? How do you really say what you want to say? You've got to do it in person, haven't you? You've got to do it in person. At Christmas, God doesn't send a card. He doesn't send a heart emoji on a WhatsApp. At Christmas, we sing, we celebrate that God comes to us. He comes to us in person. And that person, that person is Jesus Christ. People say to me, if God is really real, like if he was really, really, really real, why doesn't he just send someone? And I go, you know what, you're totally right. He doesn't send someone. He comes himself. You know this already. Now, if you haven't heard me preach before, I always, there's always a little bit of congregational participation. You just have to deal with it, all right? So I need, I need you to listen now and tell me the answers to this, these questions. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a line from a carol and first to get it right gets a mince pie for free afterwards, okay? Okay, you ready? God of God, light of light, word of the Father, now in flesh appearing. Oh, come are we faithful, well done. Is that, there we are, mince pie for you, there we go. Let earth receive him, her king. Joy to the world. There we are. That's my, my curate. There we are. <laughs> Three years of theological training. I left a long time. There we are. Last one. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate. Hug. All right, all right. Have you finished yet? Now, we have this weird thing. We have this weird thing in the UK 
where people sing these songs. We celebrate massively the birth of Jesus. We come to church on our carol services on Christmas Day, and yet, like the Christmas tree, we kind of put it in the loft until next year. And so you'd be like, see you later, Jesus. This is weird, isn't it? We sing all these songs, you know most of them by heart, but the one we sing of is hidden away from the rest of life. I encourage you this year to do something a bit different. Take a step forward from singing those songs and listen to the one who didn't stay a baby but grew to be a man. The one who never owned a house, he never commanded an army, he never wrote a book, he never sat on a golden throne, and yet he changed the world. He changed the world more than anyone else ever, ever, ever. This Jesus you sing of, he's my friend. I know him. This is really real. This truth has transformed my life. I went from a mild depressive to this man of man of God full of him. That's what I am. You were built for more, my friends. You were built for more from the beginning of creation. From the beginning of the heart of creation, God knew you. And whatever you do in your day-to-day life, whatever you do in your day-to-day life, whether you're staring at a computer, trying to get kids to understand geography, worrying about your job because people don't send cards anymore and you're a postman, work in the roads, whatever you do, you were made for eternally more. This one is calling you and he speaks your language. He calls your name today. Last little story for you. My nan, uh, who used to get all these cards when um, she wasn't like battling the blue tack on the walls, like sort of so much, she used to write to me every, uh, every two weeks. She'd send me the same kind of thing every week. It was a Beano. Who remembers a Beano? Yeah. She'd send me a Beano. Uh, she'd send me some sweets, and she'd send me five pounds every two weeks. I was like a king in terms of pocket money for kids. And I got so used to it, if she was a little late, I'd be like, Nan. You know what? I never really saw it. I never really recognized the effort it took for her to do that week by week by week. And my granddad said to me once when he was uh, picking me up, Nan wasn't there. He said, do write back now and again. Just write, write back now and again. Not, you have to write a lot, just now and again. It'll change, it'll make her day, make her so happy. My nan's gone now. Man, I wish I'd written that. It's one of those regrets that sticks with you, you know? Friends, God doesn't send you a fiver. He sends you his son. It cost him more than a fiver. It cost him more than a text, more than a heart emoji on a WhatsApp. It cost him everything. In Jesus, God steps into history, our timeline, our world. This is really real. And this babe we celebrate at Christmas, at Easter, he will die for you. Cost him everything. So this Christmas, don't put him back in the attic. Don't ignore it. Don't turn your face away like me with getting parcels from me now. Come, says Jesus, come to me. It's the greatest invitation you'll ever receive. And all he asks for you is that you come to him and he promises you life and life in abundance. Let me 